Good morning. As we continue to gather on this very warm last Sunday in August, we're glad that those of you are here and those that are on Facebook Live streaming. We're glad that we are worshiping together. Jeff has an announcement, but he's going to just say it from the back. Uh, good morning. <laughs> so in two weeks, we are going to be celebrating and starting our new year of Christian uh, education called Faith Formation. So in two weeks, on September the 12th, we are going to be gathering for Rally Day. Uh, that day starts off in this room with uh, worship. Uh, we will be celebrating all kinds of things and talking about what it means to grow in our faith and being the church. And then afterwards, we invite you and your friends. We really hope that everybody comes out because after worship, we are going to be going outside to the pavilion. We will be grilling hot dogs. We have snacks. We have games. We have all kinds of things that are going on. One of the things I've done over the years uh, as a director of camps and working with VBS and those kinds of things is the is tie-dyeing t-shirts. Something that people of all ages love and kids love especially, so we are gonna be tie-dyeing t-shirts. So whether you are one year old, six months old, 97 years old, whatever, we invite you to bring a cotton, white cotton t-shirt. We may have a few here as well for those who forget theirs. Bring those, we're, gonna, we're going to tie-dye shirts together. We're gonna to have a good time. We're going to be the church, we're gonna celebrate, we're going to have fellowship together, and we're going to kick off our year of learning together what it means to be the church and to be followers of Jesus. And, and the theme is dream God's dream, as we will dream together. Thanks, Jeff. And then a couple other of announcements is we're um, on vacation next week, so the Reverend Jeff Nelson, who has been a local church pastor for many years and now works for the National Church, um, he will be our preacher and leader of worship next week, so please make him feel welcome. It also is communion next week, so bring your elements. If you forget, we'll have some here, but bring your elements, whatever you would like, a drink and some crackers or cookies or bread or whatever you decide um, for next week. Um, and today, our sister church, Trinity Lutheran Church, ha are in is installing their new pastor, Sarah Taylor. It's happening during worship time, so we send our blessings and our greetings to Trinity today as they welcome and install their new pastor. Blessings abound. Let us center ourselves this day. i 
stronger than the mountains Soaks through me like the pouring rain It's no wonder that I'm answering your call Whenever someone needs a neighbor And wherever there's a child in pain We'll be working on a just world for all If you're able and willing, will you stand and join me in our call to worship, which is adapted from the Song of Solomon. Here, O Beloved, speaks to us. The voice of our Beloved sounds in our hearts, calling, calling us, us to generous acts, to, to share, share the, the gifts, gifts we, have we have been given. given. Now, our Beloved speaks to us. The voice of our beloved sounds in our land, calling us to generous acts, to open our hearts to all in need. In every place, in every moment, our beloved speaks to us. The voice of our beloved sounds in all creation, calling us to generous acts, to stand with God's people, the least, the lost, the little, the last. Deuteronomy 4, 1 through 2, 6 through 9. So now, Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your, uh, your ancestors, is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command you, nor take away anything from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God, with which I am charging you. You must observe them diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples, who, when they hear all these statues, will say, Surely this great nation is a wide and discerning people. For what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him? 
And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law that I am setting before you today? But take care and watch yourselves closely, so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen, nor to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. Good morning. So we are learning back in the back how to do the screen, so we, we're good. So you can turn me on, Anthony. I'm on? All right. So today I have the honor of doing some children's time. Um, and I don't see a lot of children here. But I'm hoping that there are children at home right now. Because I want to talk a little bit about <clears throat> something that Mindy is going to be preaching about. And that's from a letter of James talking about the church. Now, James is not someone that we talk a lot about, but James is the brother of Jesus, and he had concerns for the church, and he wanted to tell the church some things about remembering who you are and what you need to do. He talked about hearing God's word, and when we come together, we hear God's word. We come here on Sunday mornings, we hear God's word, we have Jane just shared from Deuteronomy. We heard God's word. In a little bit, we're going to hear from James. And when we hear God's word, we need to do something with that. We need to actually do something. Don't just listen. Do. We are called to serve, and we're called to listen to those words and those teachings from the Bible and from Jesus. So I was thinking, what's a good way to illustrate what it is we do with words? So when we hear something... We really need to do it, right? So when you were a child, 
<clears throat> and some of you still are children, and your mom says, I really would like you to do this for me. And how often did you think, sure, I'll do that. My mom asked me to take the trash out all the time. How often did I get that trash out? Well, sometimes I had to be reminded a few times. And the church is that way too. We have to be reminded. And so when we hear something, we're given some instruction, we're asked to do it, to follow up, to show that we actually heard it. So I have something here that's really special to me. I try to drink this stuff every morning. I have a glass and I have some milk. And imagine that we are a glass of milk. Pretty good sized glass of milk, isn't it? I'll try not to spill that. So sometimes when God talks to us, we want to take in what we've heard and what we've learned. So I've got some Hershey syrup, which is really good stuff. I guarantee it highly. I drink this stuff all the time, you might know. So this is God's word, and this is us. So let's imagine that God is speaking to us. I'm going to put some, some of this good stuff in here. Oh, lots of it. Is that enough? No. No, more, 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 more. You can't have enough of God's word. All right, so now we have God's word in this. What do I do with this? I drink it? What? Stir it. Oh, so I have to actually do something with the word that comes in me. Good thing I have a spoon. So we're going to stir that up. And, oh, look at that. The milk is changing, and I guess that when we hear God's word and we put it into practice, we have to stir it up a little bit. It has to become a part of who we are. I think last week we heard the word infuse, which is a fancy word for saying it needs to be a part of us. And so we have this wonderful changed glass of milk. It's now chocolate milk. But it reminds us that we're just like this glass of milk, and when God fills us, we need to stir it up a little bit. We need to make it a part of who we are. And then we get to celebrate and share that with others. Well, I'm going to take this glass of milk with me. Um, I probably will drink it myself. So, But let's thank God for all the things that we have been taught and all the ways that we can put those words, those teachings, in action. So let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for your teachings. We thank you for people like James who wrote uh, letters to the church, who taught stories, who reminded us of the things that you teach us every day that we are to be filled with love and share that love with others, to live it out, that when you give us good things, we need to stir that up in our lives so that can make the lives of those around us even richer and more wonderful. We thank you, God, for this day, for being the church, and for all the good blessings that you give us. In the name of Jesus, who teaches us and loves us and gives us gifts to share, we say together, amen. Thank you. not be given by love with 
may be seated. The scripture comes from James, and there are lots of paraphrases and translations of the Bible. In your bulletin and in the pews, we have the New Revised, New Revised Standard Version. So if you'd like to follow along with that, you may. Sometimes we read from the message, sometimes from others. Today I'm going to share a paraphrase which takes the translation and uses the words of where it's written from. The New Revised Standard Version is a translation. This will be a paraphrase, as the message is also a paraphrase. But this paraphrase I'm using today is called, is called Laughing Bird, and it comes from Australia. I hope you see why I chose to read it this morning. Hear these words from the book of James, the first chapter. Genuine, no strings attached generosity is found only in God. And everything that is really worth having comes as a gift from the God who lights up our darkness. There is nothing two-faced about God, nothing fickle or shifty, nothing hidden in the shadows. We were conceived by God's own love and desire and with the word of truth as midwife. God gave birth to us and held us up for all to see. Just as besotted parents always show off their present newborn children, or as I could say, newborn grandchildren, my beloved friends, let me spell out some crucial wisdom. Listening is your number one priority when you interact with others. Listen long and hard before you do anything else. There will be time to speak later. And if there is anger, see that it comes last of all when you're sure you've got everything perfectly clear. Anger by itself never gives birth to the sort of active integrity God desires. Think of yourselves as a garden in need of attention. Clear away the putrid garbage and all those nox noxious weeds. Those weeds that choke off any desirable thing that tries to get established. Pull them all out, roots and all. Then, like well-prepared soil, welcome what God plants in you. Let the seed of God's word send down roots deep inside you, saving you from ruin and restoring you to rich fruitfulness. When the wisdom is sown in you, don't let anything stop it from bearing fruit in your actions. Don't let it go in one ear and out the other while kidding yourselves that you've heard it. Hearing the word and failing to act on it is about as ridiculous as taking a good look at yourself in the mirror and then, then, and then still walking out the front door with gravy on your chin. If, on the other hand, you carefully look into the ways of God, the laws of freedom, and consistently put them into practice instead of just filing them away for later reference, then you will find God backing you at every turn, making everything you do fruitful and satisfying. 
There are those who think of themselves as being the epitome of true religion. And yet, they can't even control their own tongues. They are deluding themselves, and their religion is not worth a zack. The religion that really shows us to be God's children, the religion that is free of any fault or hypocrisy is this. Care for those who no one else cares for. And don't allow yourself to be corrupted by the callous ways of the world. Thanks be to God that we have these words from James to listen to and to act upon. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Genuine, no strings attached generosity is found only in God. And everything that is really worth having comes as a gift from God who lights up our darkness. Genuine, genuine, no strings attached generosity. I just think that's amazing picture that I get in my mind. In, in Washington, D.C., uh, a few years ago, probably quite a few years ago now, a young person made a machine called a compliment machine. And as the people walked by on the street on that busy corner, they were complimented. You look great. Oh, I, your smile is wonderful. Thank you for coming by. I really li like your face. Compliments. Many stopped and listened. And maybe, just maybe, caused them to act towards their fellow humans in a more positive way. So perhaps life does imitate art. If we're able to slow down and to take the time to listen to positive words, they can have an effect on us. Genuine, no strings attached generosity is found in God. Our validation of who we are as God's children comes from God and not from all the stuff we have or all the words we hear. We, we like to watch the news every day, and there seems to be a lot of bad news lately. And then at the very end of the newscast, there's this feel-good story. I really need that feel-good story every day. I think of James as kind of feel-good story. A little bit of a history about what James is, what kind of book. See, the letter of James is kind of one of the anomalies in the New Testament. It makes reference to Jesus Christ but not very often. And the identity of the author is really suspect. It was the very last book to be put into the canon. It, it really seems to have more of a moral essay flavor that's attributed to James, the brother of John, the brother of Jesus. And of course, this claim has been disputed over time from actually from when the church set out to make the, the canon in the New Testament. In 1960, scholars argued that the excellence of its Greek and how it was formed and its lack of interest in issues with James make it unlikely that it was written by James or even before 130 to 150 CE. But then on the other hand, more recent studies have have several scholars saying 
after they discovered that there was a writing that said, James, son of Joseph, brother of Jesus, on this, there's lots of vigorous debate on who wrote it. It may well be a collection of sayings of James compiled after his martyrdom as, as a letter encouraging its recipients to live a strictly ethical and deliberately spiritual way of life. And it was probably written in a time that was threatened with persecution. So after all that history about James, it really doesn't matter. The writer reminds us that just hearing the word, the good news of Jesus Christ, is not enough. Hearing the word and, fall and failing to act on it is about as ridiculous as taking a good look at yourself in the mirror and then still walking out the front door with gravy on your chin. You can picture it, can't you? You see, the whole crux of faith is that we don't know every detail, every contingency, every possible development that awaits us. God is in control, and we are not. Let the seed of God's word send down roots deep inside you, saving you from ruin and restoring you to rich fruitfulness. When the word of God is sown in you, don't let anything stop it from bearing fruit in your actions. Don't let it go in one ear and out the other while kidding yourselves that you've heard it. My beloved friends, let me spell out some crucial wisdom. Listening is your number one priority when you interact with others. Listen long and hard before you do anything else. There will be time to speak later, and if there is anger, See that it comes last of all, when you're sure you've got everything perfectly clear. You know, James might have been writing, or the writer of James could have been writing to the early church, but to us as well. Every translation and paraphrase of James says, Listen first, and then act. Listen, listen, and then act. Don't try to figure out what you're going to say when the person is talking. Listen. Several years ago, I had heard this story about Larry Walters. Maybe some of you remember it. He was a 33-year-old man who decided he wanted to see his neighborhood from a new perspective. He went down to the local Army surplus store and brought, bought 45 used weather balloons. That afternoon, as he was sitting in his lawn chair, he strapped all those weather balloons around his chair. And his a few friends helped them. They were filled with helium now. He took along a six-pack of beer and a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and a BB gun, figuring that he would shoot the balloons one at a time when he was ready to land. But Walters, who assumed the balloons would lift him about 100 feet in the air, was caught off guard when the chair soared more than 11,000 feet into the sky smack dab in the middle of the air traffic pattern at Los Angeles International Airport. Too frightened now to shoot any of the balloons, he stared airborne for more than two hours, forcing the airport to shut down its runways for most of the afternoon, causing long delays in flights across the country. Soon as he was safely on the ground and cited by the police, reporters then ask him three questions. Were you scared? Yes. Would you do it again? 
to know. Why did you do it? Because, he said, you can't just sit there. We can't just sit there. Okay, going about it in this way is not the right way to do it, but the idea is there. We can't just sit here. We hear the word, we listen. God is holding us, but we can't just sit here. Open your hands, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, buy school supplies and hand them out for free. Drive someone to an appointment, bring in food, take care of God's world, recycle, don't litter, pay attention to global warming, wear a mask, get vaccinated, listen before you speak. Don't just sit there. The religion that really shows us to be God's children, the religion that is free of any fault of hypocrisy is this, care for the poor, Care for those who no one else cares for. And don't allow yourselves to be corrupted by the callous ways of the world. There's a meme that's been going around that, that talks about what it means to be passive, to let, to let the preacher, the choir, the organist, everyone do something for you. Passive, being passive, receptive, not active. It, it makes church a place where we come sit or we come stream online and we say, okay, preacher, choir, organist, do it for me. Fill me up. But the test for good worship, the mark of a good church or a, a church that is following in God's way is not what we do here during this hour of worship, although this is important. It's what we do outside the rest of the week. We hear, we, we learn, we are taught. And then, what do we do with what we heard outside the rest of the week? Do we really look like the God whom we praise on Sunday morning? Have the songs and the prayers changed us? Have they made us into something that we pro profess? This is the test, James says. The sermon ends. Worship ends. And the test for a sermon, my friends, the mark of whether this is a good sermon or a good service of worship is about to come upon us. You've heard the text, you've heard the sermon, you've heard the prayers, you've thought and been here and listened. But being in agreement or even not agreement and understanding are not the problem. The issue is now before us as we go out into the world. The final question, what will you do, what will we do with what has been said and heard and prayed about today. Pastor, that was a wonderful sermon, said the parishioner at the door after the service. The preacher said, that remains to be seen. Amen. Prayers are an important part of who we are as God's people. And there are many prayers that we offer now and every minute of every day. For those in Afghanistan and for those who were killed, the service members and all the Afghanistan people, and those who continue to try to get out of the country. For Haiti, as they continue to find people after the devastating earthquakes and lots of rain from hurricanes. 
for the Gulf Coast as we speak, where in Louisiana, the same place that Hurricane Katrina hit, Hurricane Ida is hitting. And so for all of those people, how are we helping? For the fires in the West, for the hospital workers and doctors and nurses and the people who make the food and clean the floors and the aides in this place where hospitals are so full with COVID and those who are extremely ill with COVID so that those of us who just need small or, or other ways of help aren't being able to get them because so many people are sick. For Carly, who has just been diagnosed with cancer, and for my friend Joyce's parents, Deanna and Bill, both of which who have been vaccinated, but one who is in intensive care in the hospital with COVID pneumonia and the spouse who has COVID positive and can't be with her. There are many, many others. As I said, the news, we need feel good. We need God to help us live out God's mission. As we pause and move into a time of prayer, please name those from your hearts. If you don't name them from your hearts, that's okay. God hears us. Let us be at prayer. Oh God, hear from our hearts, our very beings. Help us to listen and to act. Share the words, the names from our hearts. We pause. I'm listening, I am listening, Spirit, speak to me. I'm listening, I am listening, Spirit, speak to me. My ears are wide open, my eyes are now open to see what I may be. I'm listening, I am listening, Spirit, speak to me. I'm listening, I am listening, in this moment of spirit, speak to me, I can hear the voices of all my kids, I'm listening, singing, I am listening, just tweeting and howling into My ears are wide open, oh, oh, the joy. My eyes are wide open, oh, 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 the love to see what I will you be me. Oh, 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 I'm listening in this moment. Of I am listening. God, hear these.
these prayers as we gather to pray the prayer that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Give generously. Give cheerfully. Give to God the gifts that God has shared with us, the treasure. You may send them in through tithely. You may send them in through the mail. You may drop them in the offering plate in the back. Let us receive these tithes, these offerings this day. God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Christ, all creatures here below. Praise Holy Spirit, Comforter, one God triune. gifts we share, we are so grateful. The generosity shows, and we are thankful. Thank you, God, for the people who share, for the people who give from their hearts, for the generous gifts. We dedicate them, we use them for your kingdom to come on earth. Amen. sing your mighty power, O God, that made the mountains rise, that spread the flowing seas abroad, and built the lofty skies. We sing the wisdom that ordained the sun to rule the day. The moon shines full at your command, and all stars all day. We sing your goodness, sovereign God, who filled the earth with food. You formed the creatures with your word, and then pronounced them good. Oh, how your wonders are displayed, where Survey the ground we tread, or gaze upon the skies. There's not a plant or flower below, but makes your glories known. And clouds arise and tempests grow by order from your throne. While all that borrows light from you is God is present. God holds us. God invites us to listen and to act. May go out into this world sharing this light, this light of Christ that burns deeply within us all, the light of Christ, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit that blows around, God, our Creator. So let us go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.